Hello and welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of my channel members whose names are appearing on screen right now. If you want to become a channel member, you can do so by clicking the link in the description and there are two tiers. Uh, the first name is Shout Out Supporter, which means that in the beginning of every reaction, you will get your name appear on screen. And the second tier is the weekly catch ups, where I either go live or I do a video, usually, which is like a get ready with me, some live updates. And it's just, and it's just a bit more of an intimate chat setting. Now, obviously, you don't have to become a member. You're you watching the video, liking it, commenting, sharing it. All of that is greatly appreciated. And also, if you want, you can leave a super thanks. That would also be greatly appreciated. So, now that that is out of the way, let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. I am actually at the moment 14 weeks out from my main show, which will be the Amateur Olympia in Alicante. So I am actively dieting and I've been doing it for a week. And as you can tell, there's already changes. Amazing, isn't it? What happens when you stick to a diet? Because, you know, I'm, I will admit that when I'm in my off season, I don't stick to my diet. I mean, I do. I eat healthy and I eat whole foods, but I don't just eat chicken and rice, which is no, no real pilot, which is pretty much what I am doing now for the most part. So if you're curious to see what that's all about, check out my dedicated playlist. I have various playlists for my prep series, off season, etc. Um, I'm going to start doing full days of eating once a week. And then I also film my week uh, in a vlog. So you'll get bits of training, what I do, just life stuffs, you know, because kind of like prep, doing four days of eating in a prep is really boring because it is pretty much the same thing. Um, I am checking in with my coach today, so maybe there's some changes. Last time I checked in, he dropped my food a bit. Um, so, but for the most part, my four days of eating don't really change. It's kind of the same shit in repeat, just less and less as the weeks progress. So, obviously a prep is unhealthy and I don't recommend you do it, um, but I am fully aware of the consequences or I'm not a natural athlete, and uh, obviously there is some side effects, as you know, some people ask me sometimes about my voice, yeah, my voice has dropped, That's, that is one of the side effects that can happen with music performance analysis. Anyway, the results are there, and that's all that matters, I do this to win, to get results, and I'm taking uh, the side effects in consideration. What we are going to do is look at somebody who has been dieting for several years and has had zero, <laughs> zero success. And this is Beatrice Caruso. Now, I started talking about Bea a couple of weeks ago because I haven't looked at her channel for a while since then she stopped uploading, which is a very typical Bea move. So let me move over. We're going to look at the Catching the Snowball before it, before it becomes an avalanche. 13 days ago, let's have a look at her community to see if she's posted anything to update why she's not been uploading. One year ago, no. I'm going to be straight up and say that I really find it incredibly disrespectful of content creators to just disappear for weeks and not tell their audience why they're not uploading, especially when she was uploading. Look, she was uploading almost on a regular basis for weeks on end, and then she just disappears. Now, this is the same as when you're dating somebody or seeing somebody and they ghost you. It's exactly the same. Nobody is too busy to send a quick message. Nobody's too busy. She has a shit probably every single day. She can go on the toilet, sit there and go like, hey guys, going through some stuff. I'll upload when I'm ready. That's all you need to do. I don't understand it. Um, as a content creator myself, I would, I'm always very clear with my audience about, uh, even with my members, I'm, sometimes I move things around, but I'm always updating people. I don't just not deliver. And if I can't deliver, I explain why. And I think this is what you should do. And I think this shows respect to your audience, to your viewers, and that you actually care. In my opinion, maybe I'm weird. Maybe I take too much um, maybe I take this, not, not too serious, that's not the word, but in general, I just find it incredibly rude of content creators to just vanish for weeks on end and not say anything. Maybe she's on the short, let's have a look there actually. Hello. No one has uploaded. Day one, no added sugar, no. But this is very typical of Beatrice. I don't know if it's because, like, I don't... I don't know if it's because she's announced she's doing weight loss. Um, I don't know if Alan's been covering her. To be honest, like I've not really been looking at much YouTube at all. Um, and it, I've been trying to sort of change my, my consumption of content uh, to stuff that isn't like as much drama. 
because it's not always so, always so good for the brain. <laughs> but besides that point, um, I don't know who else has been covering her. I just know that like a couple of weeks ago, I started talking about her not doing videos. And then since then she disappeared. Um, I don't think it is because of me per se. I think she's just fell off the wagon as usual. And then she'll come back with some video. I guess there's going to be some mentals involved. Um, and yeah, anyway, let's get into this video. Let's see what she has to say. Have you gals ever like started getting ready and taken such an egregiously long time doing your makeup that your hair air dries and then it's like a little bit big and you feel like you just went uh, But she hasn't got that much makeup on though. How could have how could it have taken that long to air dry? Unless she took started it and it took it off make it as big as humanly possible without hairspray because you don't believe in hairspray because it gives you back me every time you use it because you're kind of in a weird mood. Well, that's where this video is starting out. <laughs> So to see how much air this beach can get. This is the smallest curling iron I have. This is the only curling iron I have. Now why am I in a weird mood, you ask? I don't know. I think it's mainly because I've been sick and I'm sick and tired of being sick because all of November I was sick and- Yeah, maybe you need to like do something about your health, like lose weight properly and like follow an actual diet and do things correctly as opposed to just making videos for sponsorships and then disappearing for weeks on end. Sorry if I'm, um, if I'm being- I know that Beatrice is really likable and like I, I was a big fan of her as well but this whole quirky character, the whole, oh, I'm so silly, la la la, it's kind of it's kind of wearing thin, isn't it? At the end of the day, she's been on YouTube for three years and she's literally the same weight as when she started. She makes a lot of fucking money. I can promise you, she makes a lot of money based on her views. So she has no job, makes a lot of money doing YouTube, has all the spare time in the world. Why are you not investing that money into... I don't know, some actual proper medical, some actual proper mental health treatment, get like some meal prep service. She could do a lot, get a fucking personal trainer. She could easily invest, like this had 84k views, based on the fact that there's probably a sponsorship in here as well. Let's have a look, is there a sponsorship in here? It's li literally, this video has been sponsored by BetterHelp. This is... So she only makes videos when there's sponsorships. On top of that, this video has been sponsored by BetterHelp. She's been sponsored by BetterHelp for the best part of what, like two years now? Why, why? Clearly BetterHelp doesn't work because she's still in the same fucking position. I'm sorry, but I just, I feel feisty today for some reason. I don't know why. I slept pretty well. I had a really awesome weekend. I'm not even hungry. My prep has just started. I think it's just like sometimes, you know when, when some people you just like, you hit the you hit the wall with the bullshit and you're just done with it. I think I'm just there with her. Basically, that's what it is. I'm just done with the bullshit and excuses. And it seems like I can't catch a break because all of a sudden, January, I was on my grind, not only in the sense of doing good on my diet, but also pumping out content, like actually being decent at my job and deadlines. <laughs> and then I got a fever that went all the way up to 103.5. So she's been sick, well, she's been sick for three weeks, two weeks now. Even if you're sick, Look, unless she's like dying a bit and I'll take back everything I'm saying, if she's been in the hospital or something like that. Still, even if you're sick as a normal person, it takes literally, what, a whole two hours minutes to type out a community post. And so like, guys, I'm sick. I'll upload content when I'm feeling better. That's it. Why not? But then, oh, I love my audience. You guys mean so much to me. Ooh, boo, boo. This is like fucking, what do you know, call it? No, it's not love bombing, but... It basically kind of is, right? It's like basically saying how much you love somebody, but then you, but you don't do anything for them. You just say the words. Which apparently, according to Google, you're supposed to seek medical attention at like 103. And that's like the shittiest I have ever felt in a long time. I went so long without being sick. Before November, the last time I got sick was, I got like a little bit of fatigue when I took the COVID shot, you know, and I was like down, but it wasn't like a true sickness. But before that, girl, it's been years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, it's just like back to back. And it's not only like the thing of like feeling shitty, but it's also, it kind of messed up some stuff. As far as my 30 days no added sugar thing, I was super excited about finishing that strongly. And that didn't happen. Also, the end of the Why did it not happen? Are we going to get a reason? Is she going to talk about it? Or she's just going to say... Like, I appreciate the honesty, but, like, there's, there's being open... Okay, I fucked up, but... What's next? What are you going to do about it? Where's the accountability? What? Why did you mess up? Are we going to look inwards and try and understand what we can do better next time? Or are we just going to go like, ah, oh, I messed up. Okay. You've been messing up for three years now. 
the month was when I was gonna redo those physical tests that I did at the end of December, you know, like the run half a mile thing. But I feel weak as shit. Like I still do and it's lingering and my lungs feel heavy. So it's like, I know it would just be worse than what it was. And honestly, I've been procrastinating going back in the gym because not only did my ass decide to get sick, but my ass decided to start a major DIY project in the gym. So that is completely unusable right now, um, which is another big deterrent. She does a lot of these DIY projects. I reckon it's a form of distraction. I want, uh, obviously, um, but yeah, she's, I'm not saying that DIY is wrong, but obviously she's always changing things around in her environment and moving and doing things around because she's, I guess, unsettled, which is probably why she talked to a therapist. Hi, huh, if only there was something like better help. Hmm. I don't know why, because I could just slap some weights in the house, but I don't know. I don't know what. I still don't think it's the same. I mean, some people do get good results. Some of my clients do get really good results training from home. I will say like fucking hats off to anybody that is training from home because it is so much harder. Um, but you are quite limited to what you can do. Unless you have like a pretty good setup. If you only have a few dumbbells and stuff. I mean, she has a good setup. But if you at home only have a few dumbbells and especially if they're like five and 10 pound dumbbells, if you want to try and grow your ass and your legs as a woman, which most women do want to do, um, I'm not saying go enormous like wellness, but most women look to tone their legs and tone their butt. Toning basically means building muscle. Building a lot of muscle and getting really muscular is very hard. Normally speaking, this means using performance enhancers and many years of training and eating a lot and being very strict and consistent and, 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 and. But you can lift a lot of heavy weight as a woman and still be petite. And then what happens is you look toned. That's how you get toned. But yeah, with five and 10 pound, 10 pound dumbbells, you're not gonna get there. Uh, sorry to burst the bubble, but it's just not gonna happen. You need more weight, especially for the back, especially for the legs. These are big, strong muscles. They need heavier loads in order to progress. I promise, but honestly, I'm starting to think I'm cursed. I'm just realizing now I should have had like a more solid She really feels sorry for herself a lot, eh? For somebody that's so blessed in life to have all this freedom, all this availability, to have the financial means to have a home gym, to just work whenever she wants to, but yeah, she's cursed. Poor her. Method than just starting at the very top of my head for this. Because later on, we were picking up Steven from the airport. Because he had to go on a work trip. So some of us have been alone and crazy for the past three days. Which is probably contributing to this weird mood I'm in. Oh, we are getting somewhere. But now we're good. <laughs> We're channeling Miley Cyrus at the Grammys. I saw a couple of memes about that hair, but I can't tell if they were saying it was good or bad because I barely paid attention. Another thing about my sickness, which literally no one cares. Everyone's sick of hearing me talk about my sicknesses. But the yes, a little bit, yes. The first antibiotic they gave me was penicillin. Is it just me or do, like, does penicillin seem really outdated? Remember that movie Balto? This is like a way 90s kid throwback, but where that dog had to schlep a bunch of glass vials of medicine to- this I do remember this movie and it made me cry, I'm pretty sure town to save this little girl who was gonna die of whatever illness she had. Penicillin is giving that medicine from Balto. By the way, Balto straight up traumatized me and I could not stop watching it. We had a video store called Hastings and I would either rent Balto, this one like fever dream rabbit cartoon that I can't remember the name of, but y'all found for me that's called like Little Sister Rabbit and it's a complete nightmare. I watched it as an adult and I was like, no wonder I'm so f***ed up. Honestly, a majority of cartoons at that time were kind of like trauma inducing. Littlefoot, Lamb Before Time, losing- Like I get it. I get being like self-deprecating. I like posting memes like that as well. Like if you follow me on Instagram, you should. I am basically the meme queen. My Instagram is not serious. I'm not a, an influencer on Instagram. I don't, I mean, like I do repost some sort of like motivational stuff. I really like to repost people that are disabled or that are weight losing weight and that just like overcome their disabilities or their um that do enormous weight loss or just like general motivational speeches i do like reposting that but i'm also very partial to a meme and a very inappropriate meme and memes about mental health but I th only because i think it's funny not because i actually think that i am like that but it does kind of get tiresome like all of, all her videos is just her complaining about her mental health all the time and it's like well bro at one point at what, at what point are you going to do something about it though because it's self-deprecating it's like haha funny but at the same time it's funny but it gets a bit tight it, it just gets a bit tedious doesn't it to me it does i'm a bit bored of it i don't know are you a bit bored of it i think a lot of people are getting a bit bored of it to be honest from what i can see in my comment section but then it's kind of like you can't say bad things about beer well as it happens to be, I have never conformed to normality. So do you know what? I think I need to get some new earbuds because I hear cracking and I think I hear it in the videos as well sometimes when I'm editing. So if I get a chance over the next few days, which definitely won't be today or tomorrow, but maybe on the weekend, I can go to one of the tech shops. I want to get a creamy 
a ninja creamy because somebody keeps reposting these pictures and they look amazing so i want to get a creamy especially now prep starts um and i'm going to get some new airbrush because i think that's the reason why there is um some crackling sometimes and it's because my cat my cat likes to chew on them on cords and stuff sometimes when it comes to curling your hair you just got to trust the process and hope that like a good shake out solves all your issues which oftentimes it doesn't but you know what could tremendously help the sponsor of today's video which is better help. Listen, while doing this to my hair was definitely not the best decision that I've ever made, starting therapy was. And I, like many other- I like how she's talking about better help and the therapy and how amazing it is, but meanwhile, three years later, I've already said this four times, but like how, tell me, how amazing has what better help been? Four years later, three years later, after you're starting your channel, you're still the same fucking weight and there has been pretty much zero improvement in terms of your mental health. I mean, like, allegedly there is, but then if there is improvement in the mental health, why is it, why is it not physically represented? Normally speaking, when you feel mentally well, you look physically better for it. These, these things kind of go hand, hand in hand. A good body, I mean like, okay, granted. Granted, people get body dysmorphia, people have like, stuff like that, like it happens to everybody. But in general, usually speaking, people that are physically fit and healthy, usually speaking, are mentally fitter and healthier as well. Because like, you're eating good food, you're, you're, you're pushing your body mentally and physically usually speaking you're more a, a physique that is fit and healthy is usually a representation of the mental health not always or there, there's plenty of people that aren't alive themselves that are physically fit but i i think in general if you took a population of obese people and their general mental health and fit people and their general mental health i'm going to guess that the obese people and their mental health is going to be a lot worse in general than the fit people there's outliers, of course, but uh, here's Bea promoting better help as she's been doing for the last two, three years, and there's been no progress. Other so people I was very. I don't, I don't want to. Or go to better sponsoring this about the so I'm gonna, channel, but also gives you. I'm literally skipping through this because I've been talking so much already. You 10% off your first month of therapy. Thanks again, better help for sponsoring this video. So now we're going to get like a super healthy grocery haul, of course. But um, the weight loss ain't there. It's funny, how, it's funny, isn't it? Whenever she films video, she's always like eating on point and healthy. She never shows bad days or when she's off track. At least that's one thing with Tammy Lemon. That's like fair, fair play. At least she was honest. Or at least she showed like when she had a binge on what she was binging on. Why ain't she showing it? What? Because she is. I'm not saying she's binging, but she's definitely eating food she shouldn't be eating. Good afternoon. It's been like five days since you've seen me try to make my hair real big and go pick Steven up from the airport, which I didn't film, uh, but that's what I was on my way to go do that day. And I'm beginning to think the problem with this whole thing is less so about the road bumps, you know, like the getting injured, the getting sick thing every five seconds. Well, I'm and it's more about you making excuses and using it as an excuse. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I try because those things are obviously a problem, but it's more so how quickly I bounce back from things or in my case, how slowly because after the worst. Yeah. Indeed. It's kind of like you use everything as an excuse. Of it, I was still feeling really fatigued and had a cough, but you can still move within those parameters. Yeah, so if you're sick, obviously, if you're proper sick sick and you have a fever and it's very chesty, you shouldn't exercise. If you have a bit of a head cold, you can still exercise. If you don't want to, if you go to the gym, obviously, just be mindful, clean after yourself, but you can still train with a bit of a cold depending on how severe the cold is, but you can work out with the cold, just don't train as intensely because really heavy training actually suppresses the immune system. So train light, take longer breaks in between, go for walks. There's many things you can do and still be active. You don't have, just because you've got a bit of a sniffle or a bit of a headache or something, and if you're gonna use that as an excuse to just be fucking lazy for days on end, well, yeah, no wonder you're never gonna get anywhere. It's just, and I'm not saying if you're sick, sick, of course, if you're really sick, then yeah, you you do need to take a step back because it's stupid. But if, you've, if you're just a bit under the weather, you can still do things. You know, you're not, you, it doesn't make you fucking paraplegic instantly. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have to completely quit everything that was going right. Recently, I've just been feeling really discouraged because it's like the things that- I It's almost like, it's like, this is all the time that happens, isn't it? Maybe you should talk to an actual therapist about why if something happens, when you're feeling down or happens, why you feel the need to stop everything? Because it's not right. Like, it bumps happen, life happens. If every time something happened in life with me uh, that was unfavorable and I would stop, I wouldn't achieve anything ever. 
You know, like the part of life, like life is life. Part of adulting is that shit happens literally all the time. All the time. People pass away. People get sick. You have expenses you didn't expect. You injure yourself. You, you get colds. Something happens to your animals. This is literally life. It's just part of it. I'm very, if you're somebody where nothing ever happens and everything goes right all the time, so I'm just seeing what my hair is doing and it's looking fucking awful. It's wash day and I need to cut my fringe again. But besides that point, it's just like, you just gotta go with it. And like, okay, have a day where you feel moody. Have a day where you feel shit. Have a day where you feel kind of sorry for yourself. I do that. Of course I do. But I'm not gonna let that stop me from reaching my goals. Because why should I? Like me, like I can sit around and feel sorry for myself. But that, that, that's not an excuse for me to sit there and eat Ben and Jerry's and pizza. Because at the end of the day, now my goal is to step on stage better than last time. And hopefully win a pro card. If it will happen, I don't know. The Amateur Olympia in Alicante is a very big show. Very big show. It's probably one of the biggest ones in Europe. Besides the Arnold in... the in, I think the Alicante Amateur Olympia is quite possibly the biggest European bodybuilding show besides the Arnold's in uh, the UK. So, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Will I win a pro card? I don't know. Do I think I deserve a pro card? Yes. Is there potentially going to be somebody better than me? Possibly. Who knows? It's all very possible. Maybe I'll enter in two categories. Maybe I'll enter in figure and physique. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do that. Shall I do that? It's kind of expensive though. 300, 350 euros to enter. For an Oprah show. But maybe I will do that. I don't know. But the point being is, if, I, if something happened to me where I, I just use it as an excuse to give up and just not do nothing for days, then yeah. I would never bring a package that's worthy of being a pro. Now, whether I get the pro card is depending on many factors, but now I can deliver the conditioning. My size has improved. I have grown. I will be better than last time. I worked for it. So why shouldn't I? I was doing like two or three weeks ago that were easy and getting easier and I was seeing progress and strength and stuff feel so much harder now like I went to water aerobics the other day you know trying to get back on the exercising bandwagon and I came home and what was meant to be like a small nap because I was exhausted ended up being an all-day snooze fest which if you've ever napped all day you know you don't wake up feeling refreshed you wake up feeling like a piece of shit then just like little simple things like going up the stairs getting winded from that when before I was like that's like really concerning. I mean, this could be because she has been sick. When you are sick, you do get out of breath quicker and easier. Um, but also it's very normal. Like, what is she doing on her period? Like, I get very tired in the lead up to my period. There is, there is parts, especially as a woman, during our monthly cycle, there is periods where you get more tired. Changes in weather really impacts me a lot. Uh, did you sleep well? Did you hydrate? Are you feeling under the weather? Do you have a lot of stresses going on? You cannot expect to step in the gym every day and beat your last training session. It's great if you can progress, but we all hit a limit at some point. And when that when that point hits, then you just have to train, change your training, you have to adapt it, or and just accept that it is part and parcel of it. You're not gonna be as strong every single time. You're not gonna set PRs every single time. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. And especially as a woman with our monthly cycle and like the, how hormones impact us, sometimes you just gotta accept that some sessions are gonna be shit. But it's better than not training at all. It's better than not training at all. Going into the gym and doing a session where maybe you're not training as heavy as you can, what you do is, or what I do is, if I know I'm not gonna be as strong, I stop, I regress my weights and I focus on my tempos. I focus on my contractions. I really slow it down. I take, do more repetitions. So that way you're still getting a good workout, but it's just not as heavy as you normally do, but it's still a good workout and it's better than not working out at all seeing progress in the gym as far as being able to lift heavier and all this stuff it just feels like i keep getting knocked back to the beginning and that is such a mind f but in my head i think i'm putting way too much emphasis on the working out portion like don't get me wrong your physical fitness is important like i'm not saying that it's not i'm just saying like when i feel physically weak i feel like none of the other stuff matters when in reality there's that saying um i'm gonna mess it up because i don't know the exact saying but it's something along the lines of like you can't work out enough to compensate for a bad diet which is true because weight loss yeah you literally can't out train a bad diet that's a hundred percent fact you will see me getting lean now partially because i'm in this like deficit also because i am a hundred percent i weigh out every single thing to the gram i'm eating everything my coach says i mean like maybe i'll change out my chicken for some fish here and there maybe i'll have some prawns instead maybe i'll have some egg whites instead but at the end of the day the food's going to be the food on the dot 
on the macro and that's what's going to get the results so yeah you can't complain about results you didn't get and you can absolutely not out train a bad diet it doesn't work like that if that was the case i would be shredded all the time because i'm a super active person is like pretty much completely diet focused but because i haven't had much energy lately and steven went on his work trip i've been like it's just me i should just order out i don't feel like cooking for just one person and like all of this stuff you know i was just talking myself into stuff and like giving myself excuses so i ordered out and then that just kind of snowballed into ordering out well, i would love to hear what she orders out why doesn't she share that share that that's more dutch coming through then uh wh why does she <laughs> why doesn't she say what she's ordering out tell me Give me a breakdown. I would love to hear what it is that she actually orders out when she's off track. She is acknowledging it, but she's being like, she's still kind of omitting facts, you know? Like every single day. Omitting details, not facts. Details for like five days straight. And granted, I'm not overeating because I don't have like my full appetite back, but like I just see this. This is such a ranty video. How do you know you're not overeating? How do you know? Are you tracking? Are you tracking? Do you know exactly how the food has been? What is it that you're ordering out? Are you ordering out like shish kebabs with salads and no pita? Or are you ordering out dominoes? It's a big fucking difference there. You can still be overeating. You might not think you're overeating because you're not eating your usual amount, which is a lot, maintaining 360 fucking pounds. But I'm pretty sure you're probably, if you're maintaining your weight, you are overeating. You might not feel like it, but you're probably not in a deficit either spiraling out of control and like there's been a couple days since steven came back where i've been like okay we're gonna get on track i'm gonna start cooking at home again all this stuff and then i just have not done it and girl a snowball has a tendency to turn into an avalanche if you don't catch it in time so today we're gonna be doing a little bit of damage control i just got out of the grocery store got some supplies we are going to be doing some doomsday i would really respect her a lot more if she just showed like what kind of stuff she eats when she's off track because it's all well and good to say here like oh i've been off track but what you're eating though like, why only show, like, oh, my healthy grocery rolls? Why not also go, like, take some pictures of, like, oh, yeah, I was off track. This is actually what I ate. It's interesting now, isn't it? Prepping and not in the sense of, like, stockpiling a bunch of canned goods and water for the apocalypse, but something that is, you know, like, a little bit more guaranteed to happen within my lifetime. You know, maybe even guaranteed in the next month or week, based on my luck, which is something that shakes up my groove, which it could be <laughs> so small or... This is really like not normal that you get thrown off balance or off kilter so quickly that if the smallest thing happened that you feel like you need to have weeks off. That requires, in all seriousness, that requires actual serious mental help. Uh, because you should not, like just because there's like a small bump in the road, that should not throw you off for months, or, like for weeks on end. That's absolutely insanity. I can understand like a day, maybe two days, but to be like off track for weeks because something happened. Like, unless it's like a really serious life event, like, I don't know, you have family that's stuck in a war somewhere or like, you know, somebody that's dying or you've been diagnosed with a really serious, like, health issue that's like <laughs> potentially deadly or something like that. Like, yeah, I understand. I understand. But what, what kind of life stuff are we talking about here? Probably nothing too serious. Maybe a plumber couldn't come in time or something. I don't know just another sickness but i figure a good way of being sick. successful is actually just expecting the failure to happen and trying to soften that blow we're gonna be doing that today in the form of freeze ahead meals just gonna make some things that i could put in the freezer and then days when i don't feel like cooking or days when something happens to me knock on wood those could be there as backup okay so word on the street is we are thinking you can still have a healthy takeout it's completely possible it's, you can especially in america where takeout culture is so big you can still order out food that's or somewhat healthy you don't have to order out pizza or burgers or fries or 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 you can order out healthier options it's completely possible i'm sure easy things we are thinking soups sauces you know something that i either just have to warm up and then it's entirely done or some second thing that i can't think of right now because i lost my train of thought oh uh just boiling some noodles and then that's a meal so let's get into it my strategy with this nonsense is to choose meals with a lot of the same ingredients because it makes keeping track of things and prep a bit easier. But also if I stagger it right, I won't have to wash the blender between recipes. So that's some big brain activity right there. I'm making one of my favorite soups right now, which is Greek lemon soup. And I already know that it tastes good being rewarmed. So I'm not worried about that at all, but I'm also making two sauces, a spaghetti sauce and a buffalo chicken sauce, which they're really similar as far as bases go. With a metric shit ton of roasted veggies, the only difference is the spaghetti sauce has tomatoes and beef. I mean, this is really good. This idea of like meal prepping, like a sauce like that in bulk especially made from scratch fantastic idea why not why not that's what i do when i'm bulking bulking when i'm meal prepping i did it for my boyfriend yesterday actually no the day before sunday 
Monday, Monday, sorry, I'm losing track of salt. Basically, he has a pressure cooker, he has an oven. As I was pressure cooking some chicken, I was oven, I was grilling some uh, burgers for him and I was pan frying some protein pancakes, so he has food for the week. Vegetables, same thing, just fire up your oven, put things in a tray, put things in a Dutch oven, put things in your oven cooker, oven cooker, pressure cooker, in your um, air fryer, whatever. You can easily do a lot of meal prep and prepare food for like five, six days ahead and spend like maybe two hours in the kitchen. Yeah, it's two hours that you have to spend in the kitchen, but what else are you going to do? Let's be real, what, sit, sit and watch Netflix? Which is probably what all of you guys do, let's be real. You know, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time. How much time do you spend on your phone and how much time do you watch TV? Let's let's think about that for a second. I'm sure you can find the time. If And even if you want to prepare some meals from scratch, it doesn't really take that long. 20 minutes, you can cook a meal. And the buffalo obviously has buffalo sauce, chicken, and the addition of sharp cheddar cheese. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that these taste good after being frozen. Now but this, great, but if she's trying to lose weight, look, did you see how much oil she poured on there? That's literally probably like, between those two trays, probably half a bottle of oil. Way too much fat. Nothing against this idea, perfect. If you're trying to lose weight, you do need to measure out your oil. You have to. Like, you can't just free pour oil like that. That's just so many calories. So you're doing something really healthy, and then, like, you're by accident thinking that, like, oh, you're doing a low-calorie sauce or something healthy, which it is. It's all whole foods. Fantastic. Olive oil is not bad, but if you're pouring half a bottle of olive oil onto a sauce, that's going to be for how many servings? I don't know. Maybe this is for her only, like, I don't know. Maybe this is for four or five meals. Who knows, right? Point being is, is that... <laughs> You need to measure out your fats. This is where a lot of people fuck up, is they don't realize how many fats they're consuming and the fat calories add on really quickly. But I am not too sure about that. It should be fine, but what do I know? It'll just be great if all I have to do is warm the sauce and make some noodles. And I'll go ahead and write out a little recipe for the sauces in the description, but keep in mind I have not fully fine-tuned anything, or measured for that matter, um, or checked nutrition facts. So that's on y'all to figure out till I take the time to figure it out and make it official. <laughs> but I digress, I don't want to keep you guys waiting because you have been asking me for this recipe and I feel bad not giving it to you. Don't touch this, it's hot. Don't tell me what to do. Well, fine, burn your hands, ready? Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> you start running. Cause you're like, going way past the bag. Yeah, these Ziploc bags are really convenient, especially to save space in your uh, fridge and stuff. Or even when you're traveling, you'll see that in the vlog that's coming up, that's what I do when I travel. I get like a little cool pack, and then I stick everything in bags like that, because it saves up a lot more space than Tupperwares. It smells good. What is a doggy day? That's his dog, right? Oh, a little German Shepherd. Thanks. <laughs> he looks a bit like Daisy. Hey, Daisy. Did you go over to Bayes Channel? I don't think so. He's much bigger than Daisy. I don't even know if it's a he. We've got four freezer meals, rare and ready to go. They all turned out to be orange. Not the biggest grand reveal that I thought we were gonna have, but it's done, it's over. It was a lot of cooking. I think moving forward, I will just make a surplus of whatever I'm making and use as freezer meal, because that would work better than me cooking three dinners at once. Why did I think that was a good idea? Nobody knows. Now we're gonna do something. So that's only for three, three dinners, did you say? Work better than me cooking three dinners at once. Three, so for three dinners, between two people, they use about half a bottle of oil. Yeah, I'm not surprised the weight loss ain't going. I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised the weight loss ain't waiting. Okay, it's the next day. Just got back from the dentist. No cavities. I'm the pinnacle of oral health. Except for she did recommend adult braces to correct my overbite. I'd love to hear your feelings on adult braces in the comments below. <laughs> I would definitely, I've, I wore braces for many years in my life because I had really bad teeth as a kid. And if I had to wear braces again, I would do it in a snapshot. Like a nice smile was kind of important, I think, having nice teeth. Like I, I, I could do with bleaching mine again, actually. It's been a while. I just, I sometimes I put like the strips on there, but yeah, I th I d I'm not necessarily like looking for the American Hollywood smile, but to have teeth that I like lined up and that are, you know, a nice smile is a nice smile, isn't it? Nice teeth are nice teeth. Like it doesn't, if they're a little crooked, it's okay. But when they're like rotten, ugh, I don't know, I don't, I couldn't, yeah, I, I, people, I couldn't get somebody that has like rotten teeth in their mouth. Ultimately, still procrastinating working out. That's why we're here. Grace made some quick and dirty workouts for me to get me back in the game. 
you're just going to do yoga, yoga. It's not really a workout. It can be if it's hot yoga and it's challenging and it's good for core and yoga is a fantastic means, but a workout workout, it's, it's not really. I mean, it can be, but I think few people do yoga at the intensity where it's an actual workout. I will be doing that now. And I just realized that I forgot my Apple Watch upstairs. Uh, does that mean you can't work out? Fuck these tracker watches. Honestly, I used to be obsessed with my Fitbit and all of that. I think you have better workouts not paying attention to what a fucking watch is. Just do the workout. You know when you're training hard. You don't need a watch to tell you what your heart rate is or whether you're doing good. You know. You know. And you know how you know? Because you're fucking sweating and you're out of breath in between your sets. That's how you know you're working out. You don't need a watch to tell you. Just work hard. Push yourself. If it hurts, if the reps start hurting, do a few more. Simple as that. We're gonna do this all natural. All right, Grace, 25 okay. minutes. Doable. Except for you threw some half burpees in there. <laughs> uh, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. I don't have a lawyer. It's kind of crazy to me that people just have lawyers. Like, anyway, still procrastinating, let's do this. Yeah, so this is like not a workout, this is a warm up, basically. Doing some burpees, some body weight squats, and doing some like uh, jumping jacks is not, it's, 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 it's not really a workout. I, I bet this is like a whole 15 minutes. Oh, I don't know if I can do this one with 20s right now. It seems like a lot. Could have pre-sickness for sure. Oh. oh yeah, that's not a good squat. Damn weak body! Not too bad. I would have a bit of a wider stance, to be honest. Uh, not a wider and more narrow stance. I think we're gonna go down to 10 pound weights on the next set. Okay, thrusters. Let's get it. I have never programmed in a burpee, I think, for anybody. Maybe on an odd occasion for somebody that's at home and I need to do like a circuit training or something like that. But yeah, burpees are not something I program because they're <laughs> I fucking hate them and I wouldn't put people through that. Excuse me, Daisy. What are you doing to your sister? What are you doing to your sister? Okay, that's over with. I reckon that was a whole 15 minutes. Can you get quick workouts done? Yeah, during the ages train, 45 minutes. But that was extremely high intensity, heavy weight lifting. If you're in the gym for like half an hour, you can't, it's better than nothing, of course. Time limits and all of that, but uh, if you're like trying to like actually recomp your body and build muscle in half an hour, I don't know, you can do like what, two or three exercises, really? Including working sets, warming up, etc. Was it pleasant? No, nah. <laughs> but it's a good first step back into working out. And it is just how I feared. I feel weak. <sighs> but the remedy to that is just to keep working out. My priority for this upcoming week is solely focusing on getting the garage gym done, being able to move everything back in, getting my space back, getting in my routine, and in the meantime, just getting back in the flow of things. Those are my goals this week. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Like me last week, I decided I'm going to start prep. Why wait until, uh, when was I going to start prep? I was going to start prep next week, Monday. I decided, you know what, I'm going to start now. Because why not? Why not? Just do it. I feel like, I mean, I don't know, I guess people have different mindsets. Maybe it's, this is probably why I can't relate to some things. Because I'm, I'm, if I want to do something, I do it and I do it now. I'm not going to have to wait. I don't feel the need to like, maybe gradually do it. It's just do it. Just literally do it. Because then it's happening. But I feel a tickle in my throat and I feel a coughing fit coming on. So I just want to thank you so much for watching and I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye! All right, well, that's the end of that. I'm also going to go because I need to make my pre-workout meal. Whilst that's cooling down, I need to go and check in with my coach because the sun has come out. What time is it now? 7.30. Okay, perfect. That means that it's, this is the perfect light. If you're ever, if you're ever doing check-ins with yourself, with a coach, with a trainer, the key is this. You want the sunlight hitting you from the side. 
no lights, no down lights, anything. You want sunlight coming in, from, but not too much because you get washed out. But this sort of early morning sunlight from the side, look, look how good that is. I mean, like one side's not gonna look as good as the other, but the point is, if you ever take check-in pictures for yourself or anybody else, progress pictures, or you just wanna look good, this is the best light, always. The natural sunlight coming in from the side. So, on that note, I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for watching. Insert a... Uh, look how cute that being. Insert a cat and a dog emoji. A cat, a dog, and a kissy emoji. Because they're kissing each other. Are you cleaning your sister? Oh my gosh, such cutie pies you are. Such cutie pies you are. So yeah, insert that. And I will be back in the next video. Bye guys.